Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Solmanad Show with Sonia. I'm Sonia Doswell, and I am thrilled that you guys are joining us here today. We have a fantastic show lined up for you. So we will get started with that in just a moment. But I wanted to highlight a couple things first. First of all, I just wanted to send greetings to all of you in this COVID climate. And I pray that you are all faring well. I know that there are uh, incredible, uh, seemingly insurmountable challenges that many are going through, but hold on to hope, stay prayerful, be encouraged. And I know that many of you are uh, dealing with COVID right now, or you have loved ones who are. And, and just remember that myself and all of us here at Solmanad, we are praying for you every single day. So stay safe, stay wise, and uh, be blessed. You know, I thank God that we have uh, the vaccine coming. And so I can see that light at the end of the tunnel. So be encouraged, you guys, and remember that together we can and together we will. I hope you guys have been enjoying the uh, other shows and segments that I've been doing on location. It's been a lot of fun uh, uh, bringing you all into my kitchen there at home and doing some cooking with my family members over the holidays. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, oh, I should mention when I did make my homemade chicken tortilla soup, I forgot to put the corn tortillas in it. So... <laughs> I did do that later, but while I was taping the show, I forgot to put in the corn tortillas. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> TBIs are no joke. And remember, I'm still recovering from my traumatic brain injury. So thank you for your patience. But remember, one of the taglines here is at Solmanad is, welcome to Solmanad, where we are always keeping it real. So we're just keeping it real. And I should also let you guys know that when I made my pasta sauce the other day, you guys, I forgot to put my bay leaves in it, which, of course, I did that later, and the red wine. So. Anyway, for all those who are taking notes and writing those recipes down, uh, for that large kettle, you should have added five bay leaves, dried bay leaves in there, and about a third a cup of red wine, and then you can sip the rest. So uh, don't forget that when you're making your sauce. Um, I had a great time in Mexico, you guys. Great place just to step away and and just have that sila moment and relax and, um, and social distance and be COVID compliant. So uh, I just want to thank everybody. Everybody there, uh, mi familia at Ocean Coral and Chiquesa there in Cancun, Mexico. It was wonderful to be back home and to be there and see all my friends again. And um, so Merry Christmas to all of you guys and your families. I love you. And, and I will return in a few months, um, probably toward the, the latter end of, of, of this, this COVID situation. But I thank you and I commend you guys for being so COVID compliant, only booking the resort to 30 to 40 percent capacity. I mean, there were times I was at the pool and there was nobody there but us girls or even on the beach. So um, the masks were, were required. And in fact, in my observation, I saw that the staff there was being more compliant than, quite frankly, some Americans are. So I felt even safer there. And um, of course, I flew Delta Airlines. You guys know I flew for Northwest for 21 years, and uh, which is now uh, Delta. So I do fly uh, a lot on Delta. I've been uh, scaling back during COVID, but I did go down on Mexico to Delta and Delta has been doing it right from the jump. And so I commend you, Delta. I thank you for um, uh, just being compliant and just really um, leading by example and reminding all of your passengers to remain COVID compliant, keep those masks on to social distance and to not even seat 50% uh, of the seats on your aircraft. I mean, I went down and my goodness, I, I think we were at about 40% capacity uh, there on that flight. So I, I thank you, Delta Airlines. And um, my love to, to everybody there in Mexico. So um, we'll keep in touch over the holidays. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, joined that. I didn't do a full episode because I was having some connectivity issues. But if you guys want to go back and watch it, it was only about five or six minutes. And I talked about uh, COVID compliance and safety and air travel. And I just gave you guys some great tips of what I do when I travel. Many I've already been doing for the 31 years I've been flying around the world. But um, just ways to be, to be safe safe and to be um, uh, to, uh, secure and clean the air, cleanse the area all around you. So if you guys want to check out that episode, you can. Um, otherwise, the cooking episodes have been great. And Gabe's asked me to pull it in here in the studio. So we'll be adding some cooking segments right here in the studio as well. 
Okay, so you guys, we are going to go ahead and get forward. I have, like I said, so many um, fun things and informative things, inspiring things that we're going to discuss today. So we will go ahead and move forward. Um, I have a restaurant that I wanted to highlight. Gabe, if you can put that up for us, that would be great. Uh, every week I said that I am going to be highlighting a, uh, a restaurant and we have wonderful. We have uh, Andiamo Italiano Ristorante and um, it says right here you can see our mission to be uh, your second kitchen. I did get a note from her and I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, let me pull this up for you. Uh, Andiamo is family and minority owned. It uh, has a new location in Woodbury off of Weir Drive and the flagship store is in Egan. And then they also own Sencha Tea. It's known for a customizable bubble tea and over 160 loose leaf varieties. Locations are in the Mall of America, St. Paul, Woodbury and Uptown. Their gift kits are online. So you guys Check them out. Um, order your your food, your gifts. You can go ahead and, and pick up. Uh, we don't know how much longer you know the restaurants will be closed. In fact, I think um, Governor Waltz is making an announcement later on today. But um, let's continue to support our small businesses and our local restaurants. Eat local, order and pick up, and they will be more than happy to accommodate you. The food is amazing. The customer service is on point. And you'll be amazed at these gift packages. So check them out online. Um, you know, I've been talking about this book that I wanted to uh, to promote. One of uh, my former <clears throat> colleagues there at Northwest Airlines, um, she actually, I believe, Carolyn, hey girl, um, she lives in Paris. She and her husband um, commutes to the States. But I believe you just retired, didn't you? I am so happy for you. So Carolyn wrote this book, and I just want to share with you. It says, I started keeping a journal in the 10th grade. It was a requirement for Mr. Smith's English class. We were actually graded weekly on them. Journaling became an important part of my life. I've kept one ever since. Through journaling, I've been able to find myself and make peace with who I am. My hope that by introducing pause, P-A-W-S, to young people, they will start a habit of journaling as well. So I know you guys are out there looking for just the right Christmas gift, but I want to highlight this book. It's um, Maxine and Beanie, The Adventures of Maxine and Beanie. Maxine makes a new friend and it has a pause journal that goes with it. So Gabe is putting those pictures up there right now. Uh, you guys can order this uh, at Barnes & Noble. And let me see. Uh, the paperback edition is in all three languages. So when she says all three, I bet she's ta is she talking about you talk to, talking about Dutch girl. I'm sure it's in Francais, in English. Um, but she said here, sent me a note that it's in all three languages available at Amazon.com. The hardcover is available on BarnesandNoble.com. And also, if you go to the website, MaxineandBeanie.com, there's a link for both places. So check that out. How cute is that little gal? I can't wait to pick up that book for myself. I too have been journaling since I was about 12 years old. So I, I know the importance and power of journaling. So um, I encourage you to check out this book today and, and pick it up for your loved ones. So going forward, we have a young friend that has been on a, a mission here. He has been... Um, out there walking 700, what is it, Gabe, 730 miles um, from Minneapolis. There he is, lavish. From, from Minneapolis um, to Louisville. And we have a news clip that we'll be showing that had aired here locally in the Twin Cities, um, just highlighting the work that, he, that he's been doing and what the mission is um, for justice. It's the journey for justice. And we have Lavish Mac. So go ahead and take a look at this clip. Minnesota man is starting a long journey in honor of George Floyd. Lavish Mac is walking from Minneapolis to Louisville. That's where Breonna Taylor was shot and killed during a police encounter. He started the 720 mile journey today. He's calling it 
journey to justice. Max says he wants to raise awareness about deadly officer-involved encounters and share the stories of families who have lost loved ones. Along the way, I'll be meeting with families, uh, partnered with Justice Squad, an organization ran by Ashley Quinones. She's reaching out to family members along the way so that they can tell their story. It will take Mac about a month to get to Louisville. He will be stopping in cities like Madison, Kenosha, and Indianapolis along the way. Incredible. So we have we've been in touch with Lavish and he sends his regards. Um, God bless you. We're praying for you. I know that you had passed through Chicago uh, here just a few days ago and you're heading to Louisville. Um, you, this is not done in vain. Uh, God bless Justice Squad, Ashley Quinones and the whole team for the work that you guys are doing. And um, I know that along the way, Lavish, you're meeting with the various families who have had a loved one that has been um, who has died with police interactions and you've been meeting with them and, and loving on them and encouraging them. So I thank you for the work that you're doing, dear. We are covering you in prayer and we just pray for your strength and vitality and uh, that um, this would draw attention to uh, to this very important cause. So God bless you, Lavish. Before I forget, you guys, I've mentioned here recently that we will be having the Solmonad Coat and Blanket Drive again. Uh, this will be taking place after Christmas, and I'll talk about that more on next week's show. So get your uh, blankets and coats together, uh, either new or like new. Any th anything that is uh, old and rugged and ratchet, stank, nasty, nobody wants your garbage. So uh, please be kind and thoughtful and considerate when you are, are gathering those items, and I'll give you uh, directions as to where you'll be able to drop those um, next week. So we have a special guest on the show here today. I just want to take a few minutes to um, to talk with Lisa because uh, one of the organizations that that I've supported for years uh, my own children uh, came up within the organization is the Boys and Girls uh, Clubs of America and we are um, uh, zooming in Lisa Sexton and Lisa is the youth development uh, programs uh, excuse me youth development leader of the programs for the Boys and excuse me Boys and Girls Clubs of America America. Lisa, welcome to the Solmanad Show with Sonia. <laughs> it's a lot to pack in, indeed. Indeed. So thank you so much for joining us. I know this is an incredibly busy time of year for you guys. Um, so I, again, I thank you for taking the time to come in. So uh, how long have you been with your organization and and what are your responsibilities with with what it is that you oversee? And I work on specifically on our initiatives related to academic success. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of programs that really work to support youth to become, to, to fall in love with learning and to become effective, engaged, and adaptive learners who are both on track to graduate and also have a plan for the future. So we develop resources, tools, programs, trainings, everything we can to support club staff that are working directly with youth around the country. And I assume you've had to make the modifications like every other district in the country to to have things online for the children then? Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, we have all become, slow, slowly become experts at Zoom <laughs> and uh, Facebook Live and all of the other resources, YouTube videos. Um, clubs have done a fantastic job of pivoting. Um, at the beginning of March, most all of our clubs closed, which was a first in the history of Boys and Girls Clubs. But within weeks, clubs have pivoted to adapting mm. all of their programming for a virtual setting. So doing some really creative things, doing virtual graduation parties, doing trivia contests online, um, doing just hangouts to give people that connection that they so desperately needed during this time. Mm -hmm, sure. And what about the, the sports and the athletic uh, activities that, that used to take place at all of the clubs? How have you guys maneuvered uh, in COVID to, to try to keep the kids fit and active? Yeah, great question. Um, and a lot of our clubs have really gotten good at figuring out ways to support um, that physical activity through virtual means. So there's a lot of great videos and resources um, and activities out there. 
Um, I will call out one specific event that we held that um, was just a real treat for us. We did an event called Whatever It Takes, and we had some of our former Boys and Girls Club alum that are now professional athletes, and they did a little panel where they got to share a little bit about the work that they're doing and what their role, what their job is like, and then they uh, challenged everyone to some, some fun little exercises that they could easily do at home. So that was a really neat way. For, for club youth to see sort of a some star power and also to be encouraged to, to stay active. Oh, wow. That's such a great idea. I'm sure the kids just loved being involved there with some of the alum that were pro athletes. How exciting for the kids. Um, you know, you guys speak into their lives and you model and you mentor and you two lead by example and encourage the kids and, and encourage them to be, um, thriving, successful, uh, citizens, you know, as they, as they go through the years and then, and then go out, you know, on, on their own and living on their own. Do you have any uh, brief success stories that you can share maybe with, with their youth development and academics if maybe they were at one level but through the organization they were, be able, to, they were able to overcome some challenges and, and uh, thrive in, in areas that may have otherwise been a weakness? Yeah, um, there are certainly countless stories, but one that I will specifically mention, um, every year we host a Youth of the Year um, contest, and so every club gets to sort of elevate a youth that has really done some stellar things at their club and in their community. And I think it was this past summer that um, one of those youth was selected as the National Youth of the Year, um, and it's a young man by the name of Josias, and he's actually on the autism spectrum. And he came to the club in, um, I believe it was late middle school, early high school and really found his drive in um, getting engaged in STEM activities, really discovered that he loves computers, he loves technology, um, and really had the chance to engage with peers and develop some some more social skills um, in a really supportive setting. Um, And he's just one of the many, all of our youth of the years, all of our youth have incredible stories, um, and they've just all been supported by some some club staff that are really doing great things and committed to whatever it takes to support them. Mm, what a beautiful story. And the clubs are in all 50 states, correct? They're in all 50 states and they're also, um, they're BGCA affiliated youth centers at U.S. military bases around the world. Mm. So we literally have a global footprint. Mm. Mm-mm-mm, perfect. Now, in this time of year, I know a lot of people are um, getting creative with their gift giving and kind of thinking outside of the box. People are giving um, uh, um, gift certificates and um, don't they're donating more to organizations. For our viewers that are watching today, can you let us know where folks can go to buy a gift certificate toward uh, an activity or a season uh, for a youth at a local club or to donate to a local club? Sure, absolutely. So there's two ways that they can support. Um, one is to go to bgca.org, and there they can donate to the organization at large. Um, but also on that website, they can find and get connected with their local club. And local clubs often are doing their own uh, fundraisers and drives. Um, so if they specifically want to donate locally, they can get connected that way, again, by going to bgca.org. Okay, excellent. Well, Gabe, we'll put that up there on the screen for our viewers. They'll be able to see that. And Lisa, before we go, is there anything you'd like to share with our viewers about the organization and the work that they're doing right now at the, uh, as we wrap up 2020? Yeah. Well, when I was kind of preparing for this, I was just thinking about why I love my job. And I think one of the things that I just have to call out and, and applaud is just our local staff that are working in clubs every day tirelessly, the innovation, the creativity, the dedication and commitment they've showed is truly inspirational. Um, And it gives me so much joy to continue to support the work that they do on behalf of you. So mm. I'm really grateful to be a part of the organization um, and mm. definitely encourage people to to get connected and check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my experience with them as well has just it been extremely positive, optimis- uh, optimistic, encouraging people. So I love the organization. I'm so glad that we could take a few minutes to highlight it today. And Randy Wilkins, thank you so much for the connection here to be able to connect with Lisa today. And uh, God bless you and, and the entire staff and happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of you. Same to you as well. Thank you for your time. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Lisa. (laughs) Bye. 
Okay, so there you go. Uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, fantastic organization. Um, they've been doing a mighty work here in our country for our families for generations. So if you're looking for a positive stream to plug your youth into, go to the website and check them out. All right, you guys, we are going to get to our in-house guest here. Let me just make sure I have this pulled up properly. All right, I am so excited. I have a friend that has come by the studio today, and uh, many of you know him, but I just wanted to bring him on and talk about the great work that he and his team have been doing. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you uh, Gary Hines with Sounds of Blackness. Gary. Welcome to the Solmanad Show with Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I want to just share uh, some about Sounds of Blackness. Uh, it, they are jazz and blues, spirituals, rock and roll, R&B, gospel, hip-hop, and soul. These are the Sounds of Blackness. They have performed for kings and queens, presidents and ambassadors at concert halls, corporations, school colleges, festivals all over the world. Sounds of Blackness uh, has uh, appeared uh, many different places. You may have seen them on the Olympics, the World Cup, the Writers' Cup, the NFL, NBA, MLB, the Grammy Awards, the Denver Summit of Eight, the NAACP National Convention, and the Super Bowl. Sounds of Blackness has appeared with Quincy Jones, Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, Kirk Franklin, Shirley Caesar, Yolanda Adams, Sting, Prince, Elton John, Maya Angelou, Usher, Harry Belafonte, Al Black, Common, John Legend, and many, many more. They have won Image, Soul Train, Stellar, International Time for Peace, and three-time Grammy Award winners. Their life-changing top 10 single and video royalty is now on iTunes and was nominated for two NAACP Image and Stellar Awards. Now, is that a list of accomplishments or what? <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. Yes, God bless you. Thank God you so much you. for being here. Thanks for having me. I have been looking forward to having you. I knew that I wanted to have you here on my Christmas program, so I've been holding out, and I'm glad that you're here today. It's a blessing. <laughs> we appreciate it on behalf of Sounds of Blackness Singing mm -hmm. the Band. Mm, 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 mm. And you know, how long has the group been around? Um, probably not, well, obviously not every single uh, participant, but um, when did the group originally form? We began uh, at my alma mater, McAllister College. Shout out to McAllister across mm -hmm. the river in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And uh, in January, we'll be celebrating, by the grace of God, our 50th anniversary of Sounds of Blackness. 50 years. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I, I grew up listening to everything that you guys have put out. My husband and I were just talking about that last night. Now, tell me uh, yourself, Gary, a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up as a young boy? I'm a proud native son of Yonkers, New York. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, our family uh, migrated here to the Twin Cities uh, mm -hmm. in the mid-60s. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when did you uh, start to realize that you had you you were mu musically gifted, that you really had a gift from God and, and this ear and this voice for music and, and playing instruments? Well, to hear my mom tell it, rest her soul, uh, it would have been uh, at a very early age, uh, going back to Yonkers, mm -hmm. Uh, my brothers and I were members of the Sam Dow American Legion Number no. 1017 uh, Drum and Bugle Corps. Okay. And uh, these, of course, were grown men other than me and my brothers. Sure. Uh, and I was at the age of five. And uh, she encouraged us, uh, even back then, uh, when we were beaten on pots and pans, yeah. you know, to get drum lessons and to sure. join the drum corps and to get musical training. And, of course, uh, the main thing, Sonia, is that, uh, speaking of mom, Doris Hines, she was um, an internationally renowned jazz singer in her own right. Mm. She sang and performed with uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington, mm. um, Sarah Vaughan, Nat mm -hmm. King Cole, uh, Della Reese. The, the, the list goes on and on. Wow. So the household was filled uh, with music. Um, and then you got to remember uh, New York multi-ethnic before the term became popular. So yes. in my neighborhood in Yonkers, uh, on a hot summer night, you're coming out the different windows, you're hearing Greek and Jewish mm. and Russian and yes. Cuban and Jamaican and mm. Italian and German. All Beautiful. these, and of course, on the on the jukeboxes was the was the wasn't the separation that there is now at radio. Right. You would hear uh, jazz, you'd hear blues, you'd mm -hmm. hear pop, you'd hear some gospel, you'd hear sure. Mahalia. So mm. all of that 
potpourri of music from New York uh, and the drum corps uh, background has a lot to do with um, who I, well, everything to do with uh, my musical background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're deeply rooted in that because you, you literally, you know, grew up listening to it, hearing it, overhearing it you yes. know, in, in, in the day to day. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when did you begin uh, to to perform professionally? Great question. Um, as I think about it, and I do actually have to think about it for a moment because uh, mom would occasionally, even in my teen years, uh, you know, have me perform with her originally again as a drummer. Uh, mm -hmm. sometimes to sit in, uh, you know, these fabulous, uh, trios and quartets and quintets that, that she was performing with. So, sure. um, actually in my teens, as I think about it, I was starting to think in terms of piano. Right. But then it's like, no, actually there was some drum work early on. So keep great going questions, back. Sonia. I appreciate <laughs> it. Make me think about it. Uh, keep going back. <laughs> yeah. And so how long have you been involved then with, uh, a sounds of blackness? Well, since day one, and uh, mm -hmm. I should explain our background, mm -hmm. uh, McAllister College, um, of course, uh, in 1968-69, embarked on a very ambitious program to recruit students of color onto campus mm -hmm. called EEO, Expanded Educational Opportunities. And they were very successful with that effort, uh, especially initially. Um, so on a campus of about 2,000, there were almost 200 students of color, primarily African-American, but all students of color. And mm -hmm. one of the results of that, Sonia, is that the students themselves um, organized a number of different activities. There's a theater group called Black Arts Midwest, mm -hmm. uh, a political group called BLAC, the Black Liberation Affairs Committee, mm -hmm. and this 50-voice choir called the McAllister College Black Voices, mm -hmm. founded by our, our emeritus mm -hmm. uh founder Russell Knight and a, a native of Beaumont, Texas. Mm. And uh, in January of 71, uh, Russ invited me on and, and as director. And, and you know what the vision God gave me, even in January of 71, uh, was to follow in the mold of the late, great Duke Ellington. Mm. Now, that surprises a lot of people when I say that. Wow. Um, but you're astute enough to know, we hear Duke's name and we think of jazz, and of course we should. Mm -hmm, sure. But Duke also wrote and recorded spirituals, mm -hmm. gospel. He recorded four sacred albums that too many people don't know about uh, that included spirituals, hymns, anthems, uh, and gospel. He did blues. He did work songs. He did the mm -hmm. music of the culture. And so uh, a lot of times people ask, well, where did the template from for Sounds of Blackness? I mean, you know, usually groups primarily do one genre of music. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, why do you guys uh, uh, have such a broad base for that? And it, And the answer is, our template was, Duke, and still is, Duke Ellington, mm. to try to be uh, a cultural speaking voice for the people, to tell uh, the story, our testimony, we were talking about testimonies yes. off camera, yeah. um, the testimony of our people. So we say that we bring black music to people of all backgrounds to the glory of God. Yeah, to the glory of God, amen. Mm -hmm. And so did you grow up in the church? Absolutely. Yeah. Back in Yonkers, uh, in fact, it was... <laughs> Messiah Baptist uh, Sunday yeah. mornings and then Sunday afternoons we would uh, migrate over to uh, my grandmother's on my dad's side we called her mama her church um, a holiness church uh -huh. called True Vine and and you know what uh, you hear a lot of people talk about um, yeah uh, mom kept us in church all day Sundays but we actually my brothers and I especially mm -hmm. like going to uh, True Vine because they had drums yes. and saxophone <laughs> and we were like yeah 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 this is all right kind of so Messiah Baptist was more traditional but uh, one of the things and it's kind of sad missing in, in many black churches now was the musical balance because on every Sunday worship service at, at Messiah Baptist and through, through most African American churches at the time across the country, you would hear gospel, mm -hmm. spiritual, mm -hmm. anthem, and hymn. Mm -hmm. And now it's all praise and worship, and, and right. God bless praise and worship, but it's real uh, limited kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we would hear all that music on Sunday and then go to Miss Shannon's and mm -hmm. uh, hear and actually sometimes get on the drums and the tambourines right. and uh, have a ball. Sunday Church 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> you, you already know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, Gabe's going to put some pictures up here, too, um, here of the group. And in a moment, I'm going to ask him to go ahead and and share uh, a clip that just highlights the work that you guys are doing. Um, Gabe, if you have that, go ahead and, and put it up whenever you have it ready. Um, but how many are in the group uh, at any at any given time, our grand total uh, mm -hmm. currently is twenty five. Sonia, we mm -hmm. have fifteen singers and mm -hmm. a ten piece orchestra band. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I like I said, I've been following you guys for years, but what a blessing it was to uh, to be there 
and watch you guys perform live, you know, for us there at the National Mothers March. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was just beyond performance. That was uh, an experience, uh, one of those life changing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it really was. It was, um, oh, there's our, our picture. That was a. Uh, that was afterwards that day, wasn't it? Right, it sure yeah. was. Yeah. Out across from the state capitol, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at you there. There's our logo. Sounds of blackness. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that's a picture I took of you that day. Um, I had uh, recorded quite a bit of the content that you guys have put on for us. That was a picture that I had taken. All right, mm-hmm. you can go ahead and, and play that whenever you're ready. See Soulful Santa, Mrs. Claus, and the Rappin' Reindeer come to life in the first ever virtual presentation of The Night Before Christmas in Concert by three-time Grammy Award-winning Sounds of Blackness. This family-friendly holiday classic will be streamed in partnership with Broadway On Demand December 19th through the 31st. Tickets are $15 and on sale now. Buy tickets at ordway.org or soundsofblackness.com. Don't miss The Night Before Christmas in Concert, presented by the Ordway. Be honest. Do you really want to? Gary, can you talk to us, uh, talk to our viewers specifically about this project? Since we are in COVID and so it has a little bit of a different look. It does. Um, The Night Before Christmas, A Musical Fantasy is the full title of uh, the original musical play. Um, Sounds of Blackness, as I say, I've been performing it for, this is the 42nd year. Mm. And... um, this is the first year that it's uh, being presented uh, a concert version. So we're not doing the full dialogue and the full choreography and mm-hmm. special effects and all of that of a musical play, but we are doing several songs uh, from the show uh, that people have come to know and love. Two, three generations now, uh, yeah. Sonia. In fact, we've got a couple of generations in the sounds now. Some of the current members are playing roles that their parents played when they were members of the group. So it's just such, That's you know, just beautiful. a God thing, you yeah, know. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't know. Uh, so that's the first thing. We thank the Ordway for that um, and uh, Bremer Inspire Bank for their for their support with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the Ordway staff and, and Carl Deemer, um, our videographer, and, mm-hmm. and did the video and audio on even just in the, the excellence in that clip that we just saw is mm-hmm. just amazing. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Carl and Atomic K Studios. Um, so many of us know it was the night before Christmas went all through the house sure. and this play and this concert version of the play, um, is a contemporary urban African-American musical, uh, and comedy take on the poem that still remains very true to the poem. Um, and if I could talk with the, about the poem for just a second, please. Sonia, yes, please. um, the actual title is a visit from St. Nicholas. Uh, but if you say that, a lot of people say, oh, I've never heard of that. But if you say, "'Twas the night before Christmas, the common colloquial uh, reference, then of course, oh yeah, I know that. Uh, written in 1822 by a Methodist minister for his family. Uh, a I lot of people, yeah. Not so, aware of that. yeah, a long time, yeah, huh. by, by a Methodist minister, uh, Clement Moore is his name. Uh, it started as a, a poem that he wrote for his children, then was presented at, uh, church, musical program proliferated and then of course around the country and around the world and is largely responsible for much of the current lore uh that's around uh christmas celebration in terms of santa his appearance uh the eight reindeer uh, coming down the chimney all of those things um dasher dancer prancer vixen and so we take some liberties with clement moore's play but uh in the main we're very true to it Mm-hmm. Well, I can't wait to see it. I've already RSVP that I'll be I'll be going. Thank you. <laughs> so for our viewers, um, I'm sure Gabe will be putting it up here before the end of the show. But if you want to tell our viewers, how can they get their tickets? The easiest way is to go directly to Sounds of Blackness website. Okay. Really easy. Just soundsofblackness.org.org. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, if you choose, choose to, you can go to ordway.org either way. Okay. But uh, by going to Sounds website, um, you can purchase your ticket for the show. Um, and uh, look at the group and see what we're doing, Mm -hmm. Uh, communicate with us, and we'll communicate back with you. Mm -hmm. And this is running from, is it December 19th? Yes, we open this Saturday, December Mm -hmm. 19th Mm -hmm. through the 31st on streaming on Broadway On Demand. So this is really, especially in these times where where everybody's financially crunched, you know, with COVID and all the, the ramifications of that. 
Um, instead of paying, you know, fifty, sixty dollars for a ticket, you know, for each, you know, five or six family members, the whole household can watch it. Uh, whenever they want for 15 bucks. Yeah. yeah um, really and, blessing. you know, in the comfort of your home and in the safety yes. of your home and in the distance yes. and all those things, COVID That's protocol right. things. Sure. So uh, Broadway on Demand starting this Saturday through the 31st. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be there watching with my family, definitely, and I'll continue to share this information. In fact, for you guys who are watching down here in the lower left-hand corner, if you just click share, then you can share this on your page as well, and uh, we can get some other viewers in here just to share uh, a little bit more of what we have going on today with Gary Hines. So I'll uh, move this over. There we go. Uh, all right, Gary, I want to uh, transition to something. So I'm mm -hmm. sure our viewers can see the sweatshirt that you have on. Yes. It says sick and tired. Can you talk to me and tell our viewers what sick and tired is, is all about and, and what uh, you have been led of the Lord to step up and do? Yes, and I'm glad you worded that way because that's exactly how it happens. Of Amen. course, how it always happens. We're just vessels. Amen. That's right. The words, uh, and so many people, again, uh, Sonia, are familiar with the phrase, uh, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, but too many mm -hmm. people don't know uh, the origin of that phrase mm -hmm. uh, by the late, great Fannie Lou Hamer, um, who we lost uh, some years ago. Uh, but she, for uh, years, uh, by herself, on foot, in backwoods, dark, uh, unlit uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, on foot, registered tens of thousands of people uh, to vote. Wow. Uh, beaten by the Ku Klux Klan and by the police, um, um, sexually assaulted, but, sure. but was undaunted and, and never uh, wavered. And in 1964, uh, when she gave her speech uh, at the Democratic uh, National Convention on live around the world, mm. she said those words, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Fast forward mm. to, to uh, 2020, and uh, uh, the, the murder of George Floyd mm -hmm. and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud yeah. Arbery and so many others yes. that were horrific within themselves. But what's even more horrific is that it was uh, representative of something that has gone on for four centuries in one form or another. Yes. Um, a, a lynching in, in, in real time that the whole world saw and that thank God that the whole world protested. Yes. Um, even uh, some of the members of, of Sounds of Blackness, a Germany fan club, Organized, you saw people, 20,000 people kneeling in the streets of Dusseldorf. Yeah. Um, Rainer Lampier, mm -hmm. uh, we love you, Rainer, all the way across mm -hmm. in Germany, mm -hmm. um, helped to organize that. So when Sounds of Blackness uh, learned of this, and of course, you know, here being here in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. uh, and Sonia, uh, Brother George was killed five blocks from where we rehearse at Sabathney Community Center, literally right down the street. And so we canceled our rehearsal for that night and, of course, went to the, the protests. Yes. Uh, and I'll never forget this because this was significant. They were and prayed up. Yes. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, always yes. in everything that we do. Amen. And, and I'll never forget this, Sonia. Um, this young white teenage young lady came up to me and she mm -hmm. had her, her, she was proudly showing her Black Lives Matter sign. Mm -hmm. And she came up to me and she recognized me from the group. Yeah. And she said, Hey, Mr. Sounds of Black. She said, I knew oh. you guys would be here. I mm -hmm. said, Well, sweetheart, thank you for being here and, and for, you know, doing all you're doing. And she said, You know what? I bet mm -hmm. you guys are going to do a song about this, but do me a favor. Please don't make it a happy song. And I said, wow. Young lady, I promise you, I will not, that will not happen. And immediately the words of Fannie Lou Hamer, you know, the Lord sent yeah. those yep. sick and tired of being sick and tired. Come on. You were out there. You know, I saw you out there. There was too much righteous indignation uh, to do right at that time a, a let's hold hands song. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it would have been disingenuous. In fact, putting um, an anesthetic on, on a, a problem that did not need an anesthetic at the time, because that's happened too often. Uh, where something of this magnitude happens, the artists come together and, and sing, you know, something, a song that makes us all feel better. But a year, two years later, we're right back to the same thing. So uh, the Lord was saying, mm -hmm. finally got to face this head on. You it's know, a and, righteous and, anger. Yeah, it's a, yes, it's a table yes. Flipping anger. That, you took the words out mm -hmm. of my mouth. I've talked to some of my, mm -hmm. my Christian brothers and sisters, and they, they were like, well, yeah. we, respect, we were expecting Sounds of Blackness to do another optimistic or, or hold on, change is coming. Mm. And I, I quoted the scripture that you just alluded yeah. to, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, the Savior right. himself 
took his time to make that whip. Yes, he <laughs> took did. His time to, yes. That always kind of makes me chuckle, so yeah. forgive me. Yeah. No, took his time. He was really angry yeah. and went in there. And, and Ecclesiastes tells us mm-hmm. that there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain. Uh, right. There's a time to gather stones and to throw stones. Yes. So this was one of those times to really um, speak from the heart for something that had gone on for four centuries. Yeah. And the words of Fannie Lou Hamer yeah. really embodied that. Yeah. Yeah, amen, I agree. I think Gabe has this queued up. Let's go ahead and take a look at this this clip here, the video. sat down and spent a lot of time with uh, our sister Patricia yes. from Atlanta. Yes. And she showed me that she was, she was, is it this video she was in, right? Or was it the other one? She was on one of the, the original Black Panthers. Yes, was yes. She was 70 years old, 72 Isn't years old. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, this is, it is, a, it's a generational group. It's a generational uh, video and, and clearly it's a generational message. It's a 400 year old message. Mm-hmm. And you guys, um, have this is probably going to be up for how many awards? Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. Well, you know, um, yeah. we we appreciate that on the professional side of a record promotion, all of that. But but moreover, uh, Sister yeah. Sonia, we Sounds of Blackness considers uh, and and wants Sick and Tired to be considered um, 
the anthem for today's movement. Yes. Um, and you, you know very well that um, it is. the different movements have always had a primary anthem. I mean, going yes. back to the civil rights movement, of course, there was Angle and Nobody's Hear Me Round and Old Freedom Over Me. Uh, mm -hmm. But the primary one everybody knows is we shall overcome. Right. And uh, fast forward to the late 60s, early 70s with the uh, Black Power and Pride movement. Um, there was um, to be young, gifted and black and, and take it from me. Someday we'll all be free. Donnie Hathaway. Mm -hmm. But of course, at the top of the list was James Brown. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. That was yeah. so that to me uh, is the most impactful song in the history of, of African-American people. Mm -hmm. Um, to that statement and, and all that empowering. it really implies. And yes, yes. Mm -hmm. After, because there was a time, Sonia, that um, being called black, whether it was by someone black or someone not black, was even worse than being called the N word. Yeah. Because just the whole colorism thing. And so to make that statement, yes, I'm this and I'm proud of this, you know, yes. this is what God and how God made me yes. was revolutionary from, uh, revolutionary from what had been taught and inculcated for centuries. So yeah. that's why I give that, uh, that, uh, props to, to the Godfather. So yeah. Yeah. now you, people say, well, that's because he's your favorite artist. And, but, <laughs> and that's a true story, but, but still taking mm -hmm. nothing away from that song. And so anyway, my point is that we want, um, uh, Sounds of Blackness Want Sick and Tired to be the anthem for today's movement, which is mm. is truly worldwide, uh, probably more than ever before. And and it, these movements have always been youth galvanized, but even probably to a greater degree now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So, and you can, anything that you guys are posting out there about this, you can also put hashtag Sick and Tired, hashtag Sounds of Blackness. Yes, and and the young lady we see in that that end shot there, that's uh, Jamisia Bennett. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's uh, the principal lead in this on that song, mm -hmm. but she also uh, made her directorial debut for the video. She directed it oh, she and did, did an it. amazing did job. Yes, yeah, so yeah. shout out to Jamesia. Ah, oh, she did an excellent yeah. job. Well done, Queen. Well done. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I you know, and it, it it truly is it truly is the theme. And um, oh, look at those highlights. He's still going back and showing a few more. Yes, you, you can just feel the heartbeat. Absolutely. Know, which is beating as one, you know, coming from this. Look at this shot right here. Yes, and, and a shout out while we're looking to um, High School for Recording Arts, uh, HSRA. So we yeah. say uh, Sick and Tired, Sounds of Blackness, featuring our special guests once again, who also were our special guest students from HSRA uh, on our previous single entitled Royalty. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we send love to T.C. Ellis. Uh, and and all the uh, the staff uh, at uh, HSRA. Mm -hmm. Much of this footage was shot at HSRA oh, or in HSRA or right across the street okay. from High School of Recording Arts uh, on University in St. Paul. Okay. And you know, some people we've gotten uh, even uh, fan mail, et cetera, Sonia from overseas, and they say. Uh, is that a Hollywood set? It looks like a war zone. And we say it was a war zone. And right. no, it's not a Hollywood set. That's no. it. I mean, people don't believe that, you know, that much right. damage happened. But yeah. 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 Boy, I tell you, I know everybody has ascended upon it. They keep referring to the Twin Cities here as ground zero. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, no need for Hollywood set. All you had to do was nope. head right down there. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Well, I pray that this does get just international uh, attention, um, you know, on the uptick. I know it already has, but I, I just hope and I pray that this message goes out and and people are going to your website and and they're they're embracing the message and that that God will touch uh, hardened hearts and take yes. hearts of stone and turn them into hearts of flesh and give them eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Got to preach and prophesy all at once, Come and and on. I'm so glad not only for your prayer, really that just was, but also by going to the website for those that choose to purchase um, mm -hmm. a copy of Sick and Tired and mm -hmm. see the, or a lot of people have asked about the the sweat the merchandise. Yes. We uh, please do that because you're you're also we're going to donate a portion of the proceeds to the George Floyd Scholarship mm -hmm. Foundation. Beautiful. So yeah, you'll be supporting that as well. Beautiful. Yes. And can our viewers go on your website? Is there a place where they can actually just place a donation to the organization? God bless you for saying mm -hmm. yes. They can just okay. at soundsofblackness.org. Okay. And we do have a, a donate uh, option there. 
Okay, fantastic. So get on there, you guys. Go to soundsofblackness.org. Check out the website. Check out the merchandise. Order your sweatshirt. I'm, I'll be ordering mine today. Thank you. Amen. Oh, thank you, Sonia. Yes, I will. Get your tickets. You guys want to go and check out um, the night before Christmas, the concert, uh, all the great work that Sounds of Blackness is doing. And and it's all God-inspired. And, yes, it and, is. And motivated and, and, and driven and equipped um, by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Yes, it is. I, I love uh, the late, great uh, country artist, the great Chet Atkins, mm -hmm. had a quote that I love. He was asked about his songwriting, and he was a great songwriter. But he said, uh, there are no songwriters. All music is given. Yeah, come on. And, and yeah, right. So, And I, mm -hmm. I subscribe to that, that uh, notion as well. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Well, Gary, we are just about up here with our time. I want to be uh, sensitive of that. I know that you need to race off to that <laughs> studio and get back to work with the team. So um, I, I won't keep you here any longer than, than what we had discussed. But I thank you so much, my brother, for coming in. And oh, bless you, sister. Sharing your work and your heart and and your mission and, and really your, your assignment that God has given you. And there it is. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Again, on behalf of all of Sounds of Blackness, you know, we, we appreciate the opportunity. We appreciate your support and love and Amen. prayers. Amen. You know, the scripture says, how will they hear without a preacher? Well, when Amen. it comes to music, how will they hear without a DJ, without a Sonya, without a Solomon right. to get it out to the people? So That's right. uh, we send that that love right back to you. Amen. Thank you. We all do our part. You know, we talk about that. That's the Solomon way. Uh, the needs are great. Uh, there's much to do. Uh, but if we would all simply do that, which God has, has called us to do, uh, uh, as big or as little as it may seem, um, it is of his divine purpose. And if yes, all we would just be um, uh, obedient and step out in faith, step out of the boat and yes. and step out in faith, walk by faith, not by sight, and and lock arms and lock hearts together and just do our part, ooh, imagine what the world would look like. Come on, Bishop. Mm, amen. Come on. <laughs> ooh, get me started. Amen, amen. <laughs> Start preaching, got my happy amen. phrase for you yeah. going under the table now. <laughs> Amen. Well, again, I thank you so much. Um, God bless you and the team for all that you're doing. And I look forward to having you back on the show. I'd Anytime. like to have, I'd like to have an update and, um, okay. have you come and speak with our viewers again and, and just share what, you know, the, the next step is and, and the next assignment that God is putting on your heart collectively. I'd be honored yeah. to once again Amen. and standing by. Amen. Well, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Sonia. Hey, everybody. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to my girl, Christy Foster. God bless you, sis. Happy 54th birthday today. And like I had said earlier, um, you know, who knew that on that day when, when we met as 14 year old little girls and, um, I didn't even remember this. You just reminded me of this. Um, you were new to our high school because of where we were in Seattle and how it was divided up. And, and I walked up to you and I said, I'll be your friend. <laughs> I don't remember doing that, but you certainly did. And and who knew that all these years later, you know, that we became besties then, and here we are living our best lives today. And and I can say God knew, God knew, because we serve a God of purpose, not a God of happenstance. Amen. 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 So God bless you, Christy. I love you so much, sis. And uh, I look forward to celebrating when we can come together again. And uh, I just thank all of you for tuning in here at the Solmanad Show with Sonia. I hope that you would be inspired inspired and encouraged to share uh, the show with everybody. We hope that that when you leave the show each time that you are leaving uh, informed, that you are leaving encouraged, that you are leaving uplifted and, uh, and challenged where there needs to be areas of, of, of challenge in your life. So we love you. God bless you. And y'all stay blessed with whatever you put your hands to do. Until next time. Ciao.